in one of my last videos we started putting more parts on to what is going to be my dream Suron build and that was only the start of it so for today's video we've got a handful more parts to put on the Suron we're going to be swapping some parts that I already upgraded earlier on in the year and we're also going to swap some parts that I haven't upgraded at all yet then once these are complete we're going to go ride so the first thing we've got to change today on the bike is this red key cover the only reason I bought a red one is it was the cheapest at the time when I was looking for one at the start of the year now I decided that the bike's color scheme is going to be black and orange it needs to be orange so as easy as the key cover is now orange, matches the bike so much better, looks so much better, is actually made better quality than the red one was. The red one I ordered from China, this one came from a company called JFG Racing. It actually gives you more clearance where the cables go down and into the bike, meaning that they're not rubbing, meaning that there's less chance of damaged cables when you turn in the handlebars. And the fitment for the USB plug and the ignition was so much nicer. Either way, the key cover now matches the rest of the bike and looks so good in my opinion. Next up, also from JFG Racing, we've got these orange nuts for the front wheel axle and we've got these orange front wheel spacers which come with new o-ring these will replace the black nuts and the black spacers at the front only a small upgrade and very small detail but they say the devil's in the detail so let's get on with it when it comes to taking off the front wheel you're going to want to undo the two bolts on either side of the fork clamps that are clamping down on the axle going through the front wheel these don't want to be fully removed but they want to be loosened enough that you'll be able to get your axle out easily without any struggles then next you're going to want to get two 8mm allen keys then undo just one of the sides of the axle there is a nut either end of the axle but only one of these needs to be fully undone to remove it once that nut has then been removed i like to get the 8mm allen key and the mallet and just tap the axle through then once it's sticking out the other end it can then just be pulled and removed from the forks then the front wheel literally should just roll out there's no need to remove anything from the brake or the brake caliper anything like that you'll literally just be able to remove the front wheel once the front wheel has been removed you will then find the spacers in each side of the front wheel they literally just pull out there's a small rubber o-ring going around each spacer ensuring a nice fit in the front wheel my new spacers did come with new o-rings but i wanted to reuse my other ones as i'd only just replaced them recently so so there was nothing wrong with them if you find that your original o-rings are starting to split or break in any way then i would definitely advise getting some more because then the spacers will start rubbing on the inside of the wheels and on the front axle like i mentioned there's two nuts one either side one's already removed because that's how we got the axle out of the front of the bike the other one can then be loosened and taken out of the axle so you are literally left with just the axle itself no nuts in either side ready to be replaced so then like mentioned i changed the o-rings over from the old spacers onto the new spacers so they had the seals in ready to go then i got one of the new orange nuts that i was putting back on the bike and i put this tightly in the axle ready to be put back on the bike then i got the spacers and started putting them back in the front wheel if you do this yourself you want to make sure that the o-ring is seated properly if it's not seated properly it will then start to rub when the wheel spins and it will split the o-ring or break the o-ring to ensure this you can put the spacer into the wheel and spin it making sure it spins freely isn't trapping anything when it spins i also advise greasing any spacers or any of the front wheel bearings once it's all taken apart i did mine recently so i didn't need to do it this time around this will just prevent any unwanted friction and make sure everything is spinning smoothly then getting the front wheel back into place can be trickier than it looks it will take a bit of fiddling once the front wheel is roughly back in place you can start feeding the axle through one side into the other once the axle has started to make its way through the front wheel you can tap it all the way through make sure everything is in line when it goes through so it's not hitting anything if it does get a little bit tight you can use a rubber mallet just to tap it through once the axle is all the way through you can then get the other nut and start to tighten that back up and once the axle has been put back in and is now tight again you want to make sure that you go to each of the clamp bolts on the forks tightening these up one by one you need to alternate between each bolt doing one then the other then go back to the first one you started then do the other for each side of the fork clamp this is because as one tightens the other one will get looser so you need to make sure that you're alternating between the two keep a proper true tension between them So that is now the nuts and the spacers changed on the front wheel. These upgrades make absolutely no difference to the performance of the bike, literally just to make it look better, and it definitely made it look better. Like I said, the devil's in the detail, and these things are the detail. The next thing we're going to put on the bike is this orange kickstand, which is going to replace the black kickstand. This kickstand is looking so much nicer than the stock one. The stock one isn't terrible, and I did debate completely taking it off the bike, but it does serve a purpose. Putting this orange one on is just going to add to the personalization of the bike. And the cool thing about this stand is you can actually adjust the height. You've got three bolts here, which you can undo on the stand, and then you can extend the height of it so if you put smaller wheels on the bike you can make the stand smaller so it still stands up properly if you decided to put larger wheels on the bike or you put tires which made your bike stand up slightly taller like these tires do then you can also adjust it to make it taller so the bike stands up properly doesn't lean too much has less chance of falling over but that's enough talking let's throw it on the bike and see how it looks
finally that is the new stand on the bike and when I say finally I mean it I thought it'd be a quick bolt off bolt on kind of job but the spring that's on the kickstand is understandably really tough I had to lie the bike down and pull the stand as hard as I possibly could to get that bolt back through definitely one of the most difficult jobs I've had to do on my own to the sir on but saying that the end product was definitely worth it looks so much better than stock matches the color scheme of the bike absolutely spot on and now have the ability to adjust the stand I have gone ahead and adjusted it so I've left the top bolt out and I've put the two bolts below in so we've actually left a bit of an upstand the stand isn't as long as it can be but it's as long as it needs to be on my bike looking at it that's as long as i'm going to need it for the bike to stand up at a reasonable angle i'm going to go back and put some loctite on these bolts because i can see them coming undone when riding in the future with all the vibrations on the seron last thing i want to do is be riding and have the bottom of my stand fall out but that's the third upgrade done today so we're on to the last one so last but definitely not least for the upgrades on the seron is going to be some new handlebars I have been using these Bergtech Ride High 50s, that means 50 millimeters of rise. They've done really well, they look really good, but I just wanted those bars to be a little bit higher for me. That's why we've gone for the Deity 80 millimeter rise handlebars with the orange logo on it to match the rest of the orange on the bike. These are gonna look insane. I've got a short amount of time to get them fitted before it gets dark. Let's just crack on with it. So as you can probably tell by the increase of daylight, increase of sunshine and change of clothes, it's actually the next day. So that's not actually run out of filming time but we did manage to get the handlebars fitted. Everything is now put on the bike and it is looking so much better. The handlebars give the biker so much more stance and is matching the bike so much better. I didn't actually manage to get out for a ride last night but already just by moving the bike about the 80 millimeters of rise instead of the 50 millimeters of rise has made the bike stance and the riding position so much better. The kickstand that I put on the bike is 10 times better than the stock kickstand. The adjustable height has made it a lot easier to stand the bike up. The wheel spaces and the nuts that I put on the bike didn't change the performance whatsoever but they're not going to. They are literally there for looks and they're definitely playing their part. I really didn't think it would make too much of a difference changing these parts but putting some orange down on the front of the bike really has made a big impact to the looks of the bike. And then lastly finally changing the red key cover to an orange one is a tiny little detail but it makes all the difference. The bike's colour coding is now so much more on point just because I haven't got the weird red colour there and like I mentioned before the design of this one is coming so much better than the red one that I ordered from China. So finally now the sun is shining I'm going to go get padded up, I'm going to throw the bike in the van and we're going to go to a brand new riding location. <laughs> So, we just turned up at the spot and the reason I like to ride here is because it is basically like an abandoned motocross track. All these trails and tracks have been made by guys like these who literally come here, ride their bikes around, thrash it up. So let's take a quick look at what we've got. So this is actually the second part of the field and you should be able to see all the tracks and trails around that people have made. And it is basically like a sir on playground, if not a motorbike playground. I came here on a weekday because I thought it might be a bit quieter to make videos, but there's just as many people here. On a Saturday or Sunday, it does get a lot busier. Normally around 25, 30 vans of people all bringing their bikes down, but it is the perfect place to come and have a rip around. All on private land. So you've not got to worry about police turning up people telling you not to ride here. I'm not really sure who owns the land, but I know that you're technically somewhat allowed to ride it. So pretty much we're just gonna have a good explore. Already I'm feeling that these bars are so much better 
Then the last bars, I did love my Bergtech bars. Oh, this looks scary. I'm not sure if you'll even be able to see how steep this is on camera. Like I was saying, the bars definitely making a huge difference already. So this place is literally just filled with hill climbs, trails, tracks, everything you'd really need to have fun on a bike. This is only my second time here when it's actually rideable in the winter unless you want to get literally covered head to toe in shite it's just not a lot of point if you had an actual dirt bike i imagine it'd be a lot more fun because you're gonna get so much more grip one of my favorite bits here is this hill in front of us it's like a hill climb but you can use it as a jump i think we'll keep on exploring down this way for the time being it's a little bit nerve-wracking when everyone's on proper bikes and i'm out here on my little sir on but nevertheless we'll keep going and exploring I was just talking to a lad and he said that there's a lot of 4x4 drivers that even come here so sooner or later we're going to turn up and there's going to be cars and trucks flying around as well as all sorts of bikes and uh, me on my sir on. So so far I've actually stopped and chatted to a lot of the lads that are actually here. I'd say there's maybe 10-15 people here and we've all had a big chat about the sir on, chatted about their bikes, a lot of people riding 250s, a few people riding 85s. This looks like a fun bit of the track for me. It's like a, a proper little trail in the woods. We'll have to see what we come across. This is more the sort of riding that I've been looking to, to be doing recently. Now I'm getting more comfortable with the Suron. Thrashing it around some actual little trails that have been made by, by bikers. As fun as the canals are and as fun as the little tracks that I tend to find are. It's definitely cool to find some proper proper trails. I'm not sure how brave I am going down this face first into the bush we're all good I'm just trying to keep my eyes open as much as possible so I don't come crashing into other bikers I suppose the good thing is I can hear them come in bad thing is they can't hear me come in I literally just rode full on into a bush <laughs> And of course this is going to be my favourite spot for the wheelies. This is my sort of style of riding. I guess the one bad thing about this place not really being regulated with any sort of rules is there's no wrong or right way to go around it so You've always got to keep your eyes open for which direction people are coming and going. But there's plenty of fun little spots for the set on that little jump. And you're definitely going to see me doing a lot more videos here while it's still dry. I think we're going to try that little jump over there again. That was cool, but I... Uh, <laughs> Nearly lost it when I came up the top, there was a bit of a lip that threw me forwards. I know one thing, I'm going to have to check all my bolts after riding here with how, how many vibrations are going on compared to normal. It's pretty amazing how well the Seron is handling this though. I've not even got my dirt tyres on, I've got my more trials sort of tyres on. I am trying to avoid the bigger sort of ruts, but for the best part, it's handling it very well. I don't think this camera is going to do it any justice how deep that actually is. Something I've got to do before I leave is hit this big hill climb, which is a bit of a hill climb, bit of a jump at the top. I've done it before on the Seron and it handles it nicely. Let's give it a go. Oh, it's absolutely ideal. Let's give it another go. It's definitely one of the most fun parts in this track. It's been uh, it's one of the bits that's been rutted up the least. There's a few other bits that do look really fun, but quite dirty and quite boggy, so I don't really want to give it a go today.
I don't know why the bike just cut out. I think I landed a bit heavy and the uh, the tilt sensor set the bike off. It did turn straight back on though, so that's a that's a bonus. I think we've changed in the stand to this new stand. The stand sensor doesn't work anymore, so I don't think it was that. I did try that out earlier, put the stand down and give it a bit of throttle, nearly looped the bike. I think this stand is meant to work with the stand sensor, but for some reason I've probably not set it up right or it's just not hitting that connection properly. One of the good things about the Sauron, I have got this massive light on the front so when all the dirt bike riders think it's getting a bit dark and have to go home I can continue ripping. I think a lot of them have left now so it's nice I can uh, sort of rip around a bit longer. Not too much longer though. I can rip it around for a bit longer but since it starts getting too dark the GoPro looks terrible anyway. So I was hoping to get a lot more film for this video but I ended up chatting to the lads who were riding the proper bikes, getting to know people around here seeing as it's my first proper time on the Sauron round here. Everyone was really sound and really happy to see a Sauron about, even let a few of them have a ride, they really liked it. But to conclude the video there's going to be plenty more content to come riding around this little track, it's definitely going to be a new spot of mine to come to. In regards to the upgrades we've done, the bars have made a huge difference, really happy with the new height of the bars and how they look. Everything else that I put on the bike is mainly just for looks, nothing really performance wise. I guess the stand does serve a bit of a purpose but again was mainly just to make the bike look better the bike is still far from done the dream build is still continuing there is loads more i want to do to this bike still so if you have liked this video and you want to see more videos like this in the future make sure you're hitting that like button leave a comment down below on what you think the bike is looking like now and what you want to see in the future if you're new to the channel consider subscribing there's plenty more content to come i'm going to go rip the bike around for five more minutes before it gets dark i'm matt francis signing out peace